Okay, what is the difference between sociopaths and psychopaths? And what are all these different types of narcissists? So you got sociopaths, you got psychopaths, you've, you've heard the terms before, you might have heard them on television, and typically in pop culture is where you'll hear these terms more. Also in the media, like the news and things like that, because when we deal with sociopaths and psychopaths, these are extreme terms used to deal with persons who don't care about other people's emotions, don't care about other humans' rights. And they show that lack of concern, that lack of regard for other people, but it's to the extent that it's actually criminal. So typically this is going to be killing and doing other very extreme criminal activity with zero regard for other people. Now that regard for other people probably sounds uh, familiar to you because that's the same quality that narcissists have. They have that regard for that disregard for other people, or as I call them, egopaths. So these egopaths really lack empathy because they sacrifice their empathy in childhood as a way to survive when they split from their childhood trauma. So as they grew up into becoming narcissistic. As a result of their childhood trauma, they may have split in one direction or the other direction to be a little bit more psychopathic or a little bit more sociopathic. But again, these people are coming from the same place that these narcissists are coming from, these egopaths having that lack of concern for others and that lack of concern for the well-being of others. Now, what's really the difference then if these are both just extreme and they're both just criminal? The term psychopath is going to deal with individuals that are more low-key, under the surface, more covert about their lack of concern for others. They're very cold. They can be calculating. The sociopath is used to refer to those who are more over, more right out in the open, completely antisocial, and their disregard for other people is something that is established, well-known. They're right out there with it. And so really, you see again, just like in narcissism, we have covert and we have overt. So you're seeing again these same concepts in play in these terms. So you don't have to be confused about these terms. It doesn't really matter because it's ultimately all the same narcissism. It's the same thing, but... The sociopathy is extreme overt lack of concern for others, and psychopathy is extreme covert, low-key, people don't know about it, lack of concern for others. And now when you go down the list of all the different types of narcissists, like you hear about malignant narcissists, and you hear about uh, antagonistic narcissists, and you hear about covert uh, narcissists and communal narcissists, and all of these different terms that come up, vulnerable narcissists, it's like, what do these all mean exactly? And, and do we need to know all these different types of narcissism? The answer is no, you don't need to know. Here's the quick, very clear and easy explanation. There's two different types of narcissists, covert and overt. In their extremes, they're referred to as psychopaths and sociopaths. That's how it breaks down. So when you hear someone say a communal narcissist, you're talking about someone who is very visible out in the community. They're priests, they're pastors, they're volunteers, they're helping people, they're running nonprofit organizations or participating in charities, they're donating to funds, they're all about helping and having this hero persona. So they make everyone think they're a good person, but really, you go home with them and they're rotten to their own children. And they're rotten behind the scenes to their spouse. They're, they're, they're really these narcissists in covert style, right? And if it's extreme enough, they're actually psychopaths because they know that they're actually fooling everyone. On the other hand, when you got your malignant, you hear that term malignant narcissist, it just means those people who are very extreme, very out there in their narcissism to the point where they hurt others and they may even get joy out of hurting others. So then there's sadism. So they actually are getting pleasure from seeing others squirm and others go through things. 
or, or you get this term that you hear the antagonistic narcissist. If someone is antagonistic, it just means that uh, they're very much about rivalry in the way they go up against other people. And there's always this jealousy and, and, and they're just, again, they're very overt, very out there and very detrimental to others like the malignant narcissist. Vulnerable narcissist is just another word for a covert narcissist. A vulnerable narcissist is someone who presents themselves as very much the victim all the time. Oh, I, I don't have enough. Oh, I, everyone's always taken from me. People are so mean. I feel so sad. Everyone, my son doesn't call me. They're vulnerable. They're crying. Or they're always making it out to seem like someone's taking from them or doing something wrong to them. Okay? But it all splits down into these two types. They're either out there, out in the open with it or they're behind the scenes with it. It's just that simple. It's overt and covert. That's all it is. You don't need to be obsessed with narcissists. You don't need to be spending all of your time focusing on what are narcissists, what types of narcissists are there. It can be enlightening to learn. But please understand, you need to put your focus on healing from your trauma because yes, as survivors, they've let go of their empathy but you let go of your ego, right? And so you guys became the empaths. And so if you're an empath, you split from your trauma too, which you might come to find is also not healthy and also leads to there being two types of empaths. But do you know what the two types of empaths are? See, we spend so much time trying to figure out these psychopaths and like, how could they be this way? Why would they be so mean? They're this way because that's how they learn to be to survive as children. And then they figured out, hey, this works. I like being the bully and getting the lunch money. What you need to be asking yourself is why do I keep getting my lunch money taken? Why do I keep showing up into these relationships again and again, losing and, 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 and fawning and, and giving up everything and getting bullied and getting, getting maligned and getting smeared and getting cheated on and getting stolen from. Ask yourself why you are the way you are and what you need to do to fix it so you don't keep showing up like a super victim. Don't be obsessed with these guys because these are the super villains. Who cares about the villains? We don't need to be obsessed with the villains. The two type, the two types of empaths are avoidant and anxious. The avoidant empaths are the ones who are hiding all the time because they're so afraid, they're so scared that someone else is going to use them, abuse them, take from them. So they are hiding out. They are in their house. They don't want to come out. A lot of times they don't have social media. A lot of times they're afraid to get into a relationship. They don't trust anyone because they're just always victims all the time. So they're just afraid. The anxious ones are the ones who are showing up as the super people pleasers. They walk into the room and they're, oh, everyone, I'm here. If anyone needs anything, does anyone want anything? I will do anything. I'll be here for you. I'll get you anything. And they're the super servants and pleasing and appeasing. And then what happens? They get tired out from all that. They get resentful. And then they hide and they become avoidant. And then the avoidance get lonely and then they go out and they please and they become anxious. So look at the type of empath you are and what you need to do to change. Because you can heal from this. When you're obsessing about the narcissist, you're doing the same thing you've always done, which is the lack of focus on self. You're focusing on the other person. Well, can the narcissist heal? Can they get better then? You're focusing on them. Focus on you. Focus on yourself, what you need to do. You need to gain more narcissism, more ego, so you can be self-actualized. My healing course will help you with that.